All right, how's it going, Neil? So it finally happened. Synology has finally released DSM 7.2, full release, full ready for everybody. Basically the full version, no longer a release candidate. You now should feel safe for most people upgrading DSM 7.2. So DSM 7.2 has finally been announced, and this is the latest version of Synology's disk station. It has been in beta and then release candidate since probably about three months, maybe two months, and now it is finally released full live. So release versions are pretty much now for everybody, save for mission critical setups where you are doing high availability, it's gotta be on all the time, probably wait a year before upgrading, but for pretty much any home or small business users, absolutely you should feel comfortable updating this. If you are kind of one of a more cautious person, you can obviously wait a week or two and make sure nothing crazy comes out, but I have been testing the version since the beta and have yet to find a real issue that is in the actual version that has not already been fixed. So this is awesome. This update is incredibly similar to the release candidate. There is a very little difference between them, but there actually are a couple of things that I've found that I'm going to go ahead and show here too. All right. So first let's talk about how do you upgrade your NAS to DSM 7.2. So now that DSM 7.2 is full release, you should start being able to see it in the DSM update section of control panel. That being said, I have not seen a single unit that has found the update, no matter what I have tried. So I've not seen anything that's found it manually. I think they're probably doing a very slow rollout. So probably for the next couple of days, it's not going to show up in here. And instead you just need to go into the download center, select your operating system, and then just hit download right here. And then you can do a manual update. I have yet to see it here, but you can always just do this manual update right here, or obviously just wait for it to come. Though for some people, it is not going to come in here, at least not in any short time frame. If you look at the re release notes for DSM 7.2, you will see that a lot of units, mostly the 17 and previous units, though there is a 18 unit on right here, and even a 19 unit right here, most of these are not going to be receiving the actual notification anytime soon, and that is by design. That is not saying that these are kind of getting EOL'd, though it looks like they're getting pushed that way. It can also just be that they have not had enough testing on these older units, and you'll see there's a ton with the XS units, and they're like, you know what? We were not going to push this update out to everybody. They tend to be very cautious with those kinds of things, so that may be why you never see it in your update center. Though, in general, at least from my experience, you probably should search your unit online, but in my experience, it actually has not been a big deal at all to do the manual update. I've not had any issues, though I've not tried any really old units, in which case you just go into the download center and download your specific model and do the manual DSM update like I just talked about. I have so far updated multiple units to DSM 7.2 and had zero issues. The update took only seven minutes and it flew through even with a, a real pool here and everything carried over very, very, very nicely. There are a ton of features DSM 7.2 is bringing to the table and only one of them is kind of unavailable for people unless you really start with DSM 7.2 as your first install and that is encrypted volumes. And that is what this video is on. So these two videos are going to be coming out at very similar times. But the one thing that most users will not get a benefit from, from just upgrading DSM 7.2 are the encrypted volumes, which I know is disappointing to a lot of people. There's just no way to migrate, at least no way that Synology is designed. There's no way to migrate a unencrypted volume to an encrypted volume. And so unfortunately, you're either not going to be able to use encrypted volumes or you're going to have to blow away your pool or create a new pool and add an encrypted volume on top and restore your data for that. But other than that, all the features should be available for you. And there are a few really awesome ones that I really have found that I think I'm just going to start putting in my setup for most home and small business users. And honestly, most people, one of the ones that kind of has slid by the radar for me are the immutable snapshots. DSM 7.2 brings about a ton of immutable options. You have immutable folders, which are write once read many. These are folders that you can only write data to and you cannot actually delete or modify after a specific time. Those are really only useful for kind of corporations and legal environments and archival stuff because most people want to be able to delete stuff. But another great immutable thing is 
immutable snapshots. And these have absolutely flown to the radar for me, but are a brilliant idea. So immutable snapshots are kind of what they sound like. They're snapshots that are not deletable, even if you have admin access for X number of days. So for example, I can come in here to this active back of your business folder and set up a snapshot schedule. Gotta love the UI glitch. And let's add immutable snapshots for seven days. And I just don't want to show how that's gonna work. So I just added immutable snapshots and I'm gonna go ahead and take a snapshot. And I'm going to make it immutable. I could wait for the regular ones to happen that will be immutable, but we're just going to take it and do it automatically. And we're gonna do one that is not immutable. So now when I do a snapshot list, I have no way of editing this immutable snapshot, but I can remove this one. Okay, why is that so useful? That seems really annoying and not useful at all. The reason this is so awesome is ransomware. And I'm not talking about that ransomware where one computer on the network is a virus. I'm talking about your entire domain controller has gotten full admin access to it. The attacker has got everything. They have full root access to your Synology. This can protect you, which is absolutely insane. So if I'm an attacker and I want to encrypt somebody's files and I get full admin access to this NAS, I am not going to be able to modify these snapshots. I've not found a way around this yet, so I'm thinking it will work as a brilliant workflow, but that means that no matter what I do, I am not going to be able to modify the good version of the files, even if I were to have full admin access. For example, previously on DSM 7.1 and before, there was no such thing as the immutable snapshots, and so an attacker who had full admin access to the NAS, and once again, that is a very, very, very rare and only in like very large attacks generally is where they have full admin access to NAS. But an attacker could come in here and first encrypt all the shared folders in the NAS and then come in and delete all previous snapshots of that data. But with DSM 7.2, they're immutable. And so that means that I have seven days where I cannot change these snapshots. I cannot go in and remove them. And so that means the attacker cannot delete the good copy of the data. That being said, you should always have a backup and everything, but this allows you such faster restore. So this is a huge deal that has absolutely flown on the radar. And for that specific case is going to be awesome, I think. Another thing that's actually brand new in DSM 7.2, I do not think it was in the release candidate even, is now logs and analytics for SMB so if we go into file service, SMB advanced, and other, we can see there's this enable performance analysis right here. There's also our good old SMB v3 multi-channel, which is awesome. But now enable performance analysis allows you to come in here and just like NFS had, we can start seeing our utilization and our commands and everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start dumping some data to this via SMB and we can kind of see what it looks like. All right, so I'm dumping a ton of data here and we can start seeing utilization. Once again, I'm, I've not gone over this enough to really tell. I don't think utilization is gonna be as useful because I don't think you really saturate SMB, but these are the things that you're gonna be able to start debugging and understanding what's going on. You also have what kind of SMB commands are going on, which are gonna be really useful for some people who are at the extreme levels of performance. So you can see right here, I'm just dumping data to the NAS. So we're having X number of commands per second. And we're also looking at the response time, which is gonna be really useful for true, true, true optimization. You're going to be able to do a lot of stuff. So for example, we can see right here that we are doing more writes per second but the creates are taking much longer. And so just like that, things are gonna be able to start debugging, though I do think this does have a significant performance impact. I'm not sure how much it's gonna be, but it is not enabled by default and it does give you a warning, but it's gonna be very nice being able to see what is going on, especially in just a debugging mode. And then also packet length, which I assume is mostly focused on jumbo frames, though once again, I've not had enough to delve into this but I really think this is going to be 
absolutely awesome and super useful to have. The release notes for DSM 7.2 are essentially identical to the DSM 7.2 release candidate for all intents and purposes. There's really not much of anything. I think the only interesting part was this one right here. They fixed an issue. Nothing really there, but I'm still looking through and finding everything. So far, I've really not had any issues updating. I've not even had issues when I updated my box to the actual beta. It was actually a very stable beta, and so far, DSM 7.2 has been a very stable release. It is a minor update, and so it really has just honed in and not been a huge mover or shaker, but really just added really solid features. And so I definitely say that the vast majority of people probably should feel totally fine updating from DSM 7.1 to DSM 7.2. It's got a lot of really great features in there, and it just kind of happens. One of the really nice things they've really focused on is multi-factor authentication but using Synology as well. So instead of having to use an Authenticator phone app or anything like that, it now has the ability to just enroll in a, hey, is this a weird login? If so, use Synology.com to send you an email, just like you would if you were signing into Google or your bank account, and say, hey, this is at an odd IP address. Did you just move across the country? Or are you in Siberia, who knows? Is that you? And send that exact same one. There's a lot of little things like that that is really making this a very great update. The last thing I do want to mention for people, and this is really important for especially people who are not as versed on NASes and don't follow up with this as much, Docker has been renamed to Container Manager. And I think it was WonderTech said this really, really, really accurately. That is going to be a huge pain for people like us who make tutorials for people. Because we always say, Go ahead and open up Docker. Well now, open up Container Manager. So it's a really annoying rename. So if you come down here, we are going to see Container Manager right here. If I tell you in a previous tutorial or anybody else tells you in a previous tutorial to open up Docker and do something, you're pretty much going to do it with this app instead of Docker. They are almost identical of an interface. It was really way more of a reskin with a tweak down underneath rather than just having a fundamentally new app like you would expect when they renamed it from Docker to Container Manager. But I wanted to make that very clear for anybody who's kind of only half following up with this. If you are following past tutorials and you see them talking about Docker, you're just going to want to use the Container Manager app. And I will be doing a ton more videos. I've got the DSM 7.2 encryption video coming out probably Wednesday now, I don't know. Who knows when I'm gonna get this edited anyway, but sometime this week, so check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I will be having a lot more in-depth videos on all the different features now, now that I can start performance testing it. If you have any other questions or wanna hire for me a project, there's a link for that down in the description below. And I have over on the forums, please, if you find any quirks when it comes to DSM 7.2, I'll leave a link to this post right here. Add it, because I really wanna know what people's issues are because it's hard to track all that stuff down. It'd be awesome and it really helped me out if you could put that stuff in there. All right, thanks for watching the video. Have a good one. Bye.